Okay, so today we are going to be talking about atomic orbitals and orbital hybridization. Okay, so hopefully you should all know that electrons are organized into orbitals in this order. So if you have two electrons, it'll go into the, they'll both go into the 1s orbital, because that's the lowest energy orbital. And if you have another two electrons, they'll go into the 2s orbital, the next lowest energy orbital. Now, when you get to p orbitals, they're a bit different because in the s subshell, there's only one orbital, no matter which one you're on. If it's one, two or three, there's only ever one orbital in the s subshell. But in the case of the p subshell and d and f subshells, which you guys don't need to see right now, you end up having a lot more orbitals. So in the case of p, you have three orbitals. And a really important rule is that if you have orbitals that are the same energy, so just to make this clear, as you go up the number of orbitals, the energy increases. So E stands for energy. So the 2s orbital is higher in energy than the 1s and the 2p is higher than both of those. So when electrons have a choice of what orbital they want to go into, they'll always go into the lowest energy orbital. But in this case, there are three orbitals of the same energy. So when you go to fill the electrons in, so if you have four electrons, they fill quite easily into the 1s and 2s orbitals. But when you get to 2p, there's a choice. So if you have five electrons, your fifth electron will go in here. It doesn't matter which one it goes into. The important thing is the next step is when you add the sixth electron. Some people might think it would go in here as well, but it won't because electrons want to be on their own as much as they possibly can. So because all of these orbitals are the same energy, the sixth electron will pick an orbital all on its own. And then the seventh electron will do the same thing. It'll go into this orbital because it wants to be by itself. So then when you go to add the eighth electron, there are no empty orbitals. So it will have to go in and form a pair. And it's really important when you do this that a, the arrow goes in the opposite direction. OK, so that's just the correct nomenclature for when you're drawing out the electronic configuration of an atom. And then if you go to add the next electron, it'll go in here. The next one will go in here. And then as you add the next two, they go there. And that's the same all the way up, no matter how many orbitals you have, they always follow those rules. They will fill the lowest orbitals first, and then they will fill orbitals of equal energy in individual orbitals, and then they will start to form pairs. Okay. Now, if you take carbon as an example, okay. So carbon has six electrons. So the 1s orbital is filled and this will be completely unreactive because it's the inner shell of the atom. But then you have 2s. So if I just go right carbon and 6, just so it's clear, the next two electrons are going to go into the 2s and the next electrons are going to be in separate orbitals in the p subshell. OK, but when an atom tries to form bonds, it doesn't, its orbitals don't stay this way. Okay. What they do is they actually start to hybridize. So you know that carbon wants to form four bonds, or hopefully you should know the carbon wants to form four bonds. And that means it needs four molecular orbitals. Okay. So when you have four single bonds, sorry if my big left hand is in the way. So when you form four single bonds with carbon, what happens is, is that it wants to have four unpaired electrons. OK, and as it has right now, it has two unpaired electrons only. So what it actually does is it mixes together these three orbitals with the 2s orbital. So then what you end up with. So if you have your 2p orbitals here and you have your 2s orbital there. What happens is, is they actually mix together. So you mix all three p orbitals with your one 2s orbital. And what you end up with is an orbital that has three quarters p character and one quarter s character. So the energy level actually changes as well. And because the p orbital is higher in energy and you're using three of these orbitals, the energy of the resulting hybrid orbitals ends up being closer to p than it does to s. So before, you had four electrons distributed like this. But now what you have instead is you have four orbitals of equal energy. So one electron will go into each one. So then when it goes to make covalent bonds, every time it makes a bond, one of these orbitals will be used to donate an electron 
and it will also accept an electron from the other atom in the covalent bond. Now, if you have carbon and it's sp2 hybridized, what that will basically always mean is you have one double bond and three single bonds. Okay, so what happens here and an example of this, oh, sorry, I should probably give an example of methane as well. So if you take carbon and there's four hydrogen atoms attached to it, like this. This molecule will be sp3 hybridized, or sorry, this atom will be sp3 hybridized. And it's important to make sure that you know that the orbitals of a hybridized species, you're referring to the atom. Okay, so the molecule isn't hybridized, the atom is. So in this case, what happens is the s orbital of a hydrogen, okay, and you should know that's a sphere, will overlap with one of your sp3 orbitals. Okay, and just as I said before, in terms of the energy, the orbitals are three quarters P and one quarter S. The same thing happens with the shapes of the orbitals. So if an S orbital is shaped like a sphere, a P orbital is shaped like a dumbbell. So when it's three quarters P and one quarter S, what that means is that it becomes a little lopsided. And I mentioned this briefly in one of my earlier videos. So what it looks more like now is this. So it's still a dumbbell, but it's lopsided because one side is kind of spherical, like an S um, orbital. So I hope that's a bit clear. So what this looks like is you've got the, so if this is where your atom is in the middle. So you have your carbon atom and you've got like the little tail of the dumbbell. And then you have the big part here. So what happens is you get this overlap between the S orbital of the hydrogen, the sp3 orbital of this carbon, and then the two electrons will kind of just live there in the middle. Okay, so then when you go to try and do, say, ethylene, and this is an example I showed before when I was talking in the aromatic video. So the carbons in ethylene are sp2 hybridized, and that's the way you can tell that is because there are, oh, sorry, I've just realized I've made a little mistake here. That should say two single bonds, not three, forgive me. So what happens here is you have two single bonds, okay? So this carbon has two single bonds to hydrogen and so does this one. And then what you have is a double bond. And this double bond is made up of a sigma bond and a pi bond, okay? So that's why I accidentally said three single bonds over here. So a sigma bond is like this one, okay? So this is where you have a head-on overlap and the bond that's formed, the electrons exist in the middle of the two atoms, okay? So all the electrons exist between the hydrogen and the carbon. Now, what I showed you before was that sp2 hybridized carbons have one p orbital left over, okay? And I'll show that in orbital form now in a second. And what happens is the electrons are shared across here, okay? So you have your sigma bond in the middle and that's your overlapping sp2 orbitals. And the electrons exist between the two carbon atoms. And that's called a sigma bond. But in this case, the electrons exist above and below the carbon atoms. So this is a pi bond. They don't exist between the two atoms. They're above and below the two atoms. Okay. So what does this mean in terms of the orbitals of an ethylene molecule? Okay, so in this case, as I've clearly explained over here, each carbon has to have one p orbital available because if it didn't, it wouldn't be able to make this pi bond above and below the sigma bond. And it's kind of a big clue really is in the fact that it's sp2. So what this means is that you take one s orbital and two p orbitals and you mix those together. So in the case of sp3, you took three p orbitals, so that's what this three means, and there's one s orbital, and they mix together. So in this case, you take two p, and that has three orbitals, and you have two s, and this has one orbital. So again, you want to have four electrons in singly occupied orbitals. Except what you're going to do here is you're going to take two of the p orbitals and mix it with the s orbital. 
So then what you'll end up with are three sp2 orbitals and you still have a p orbital left over so that stays at the same energy level. So in this case these orbitals are only one third s and two thirds p. Okay so they're slightly lower in energy than sp3 orbitals. And again your four electrons are going to go in and occupy those orbitals separately. So the three electrons in the sp2 orbitals are going to form your single bonds to your hydrogen, your hydrogen and your carbon. And what's left over in your p orbital, this single electron is going to go in to form your pi bond. And that's how you end up with a double bond. Okay, so hopefully that leads on then quite nicely to the last one. So in this case, when it's sp hybridized, you have one triple bond and one single bond. Okay, so again, you start with your two, sorry, your two p orbital and your two s orbital. And you have two electrons in your two s, two electrons in single orbitals of your p subshell. So if you're going to have an sp orbital, the reason you know you need to do it this way is because if you take ethylene, for example, okay, now, this one is much harder to draw, so I ask for your uh, forgiveness in advance, okay? So I'm just going to draw it like this first, okay? So you have three sigma bonds, okay? So these are these head-on overlaps where the electrons in these bonds are always between the two atoms, okay? So in this case, much like in the case of ethylene, you have p orbitals above and below each of your carbons and then they form bonds like so. Now this is where the drawing becomes hard. So perpendicular to these orbitals here, so if you imagine them going straight up and straight down, you have two more p orbitals and these are coming, if you imagine that this one is coming up towards the camera and if you imagine that this one is going behind almost through the page, these ones are also overlapping. So that's how you form your two extra bonds. So if you're to draw that as a line format, it looks like this. But again, it's quite difficult to draw it this way. Okay, particularly for me because I am artistically challenged. But what you hopefully can see from that is that the same way in this case, if you want to have one pi bond, you need to have at least one p orbital in your carbon. In this case, we want to have two pi bonds. So we have one sigma bond and then we have two pi bonds when you have an alkyne. And for each pi bond, you have to have one p orbital. So what that means here is that when you mix them together, you want to mix one of your s, sorry, your only s orbital with one of your p orbitals. So then what you'll end up with is an sp hybrid orbital, sorry, two of them. So this is sp. So because we mix two orbitals together, you have to get two orbitals left out at the end. And then you will still have two p orbitals left over. And again, your electrons are going to go into these one by one because they don't like to be in pairs unless they have to be. Okay, so this is what it is. So these two electrons here, they form your sigma bonds. So if I for example, if I color that in red, okay, so these electrons are going to go into your sigma bonds and then your blue electrons in your p orbitals are going to go in and they will form your pi bonds in these p orbitals, okay. So as a pure organic chemist myself, dealing with orbitals and things like that are usually very difficult, but I hope this has made it a little bit more clear and it explains what the orbitals look like, but also helps you predict what the orbitals, what the orbital energy level diagrams will look like as well. Okay, so if it's sp3, you take one s orbital, you take three p orbitals and you mix them all together. If it's sp2, you take one s orbital, you take two p orbitals and then you mix them together. So you'll end up with three sp2 orbitals and one leftover p orbital. And if you have sp, you take one of your s orbitals, 
one of your p orbitals you mix those together and that will give you your sp hybrid orbitals and then you'll have two p orbitals left over so i hope i don't have to say orbital again because i'm pretty sure i've said it about 50 times in the last 10 minutes so hopefully this video is useful if it is or if it isn't leave a comment and let me know or if you'd like me to go into more detail about anything particular you can just contact me and I will make another video about that so these videos as I hope you're all aware have been made as part of a fundraising campaign to try and get funds for Cystic Fibrosis Ireland the GoFundMe page is linked in the description and if you want more videos like videos like this for every 10 euro I receive I will make one more video Thanks, guys.